Hey everyone. So for the past two weeks, I've done something a little crazy. I packed away my MacBook and I've been using this, my 2021 M1 iPad Pro 12.9 inch as my one and only computer, my daily driver. And yeah, I'm running the iPad OS 26 developer beta. Now I know, I know the term MacBook killer gets thrown around every single year. And let's be honest, it's almost always an exaggeration, but I've got to say this time for me, as a content creator, it feels different. It really feels like Apple has finally, finally done it. So is this M1 iPad a device that's a few years old now? Finally, a true MacBook replacement. Let's get into it. First off, let's just talk about the hardware itself. This is the M1 iPad Pro 12.9 inch. And even now in 2025, this thing is an absolute powerhouse. The M1 chip is still honestly more power than most apps can even handle. I mean, I've never felt it slow down in day-to-day -day use. And this liquid retina XDR display, it's just gorgeous. For my work, whether I'm editing photos in Lightroom, checking color grades in LumaFusion, or just, you know, kicking back and watching Netflix or YouTube, it is incredible. The contrast, the brightness, it's still absolutely top tier. Now, iPadOS 26 brings this new design language that Apple is calling liquid glass. And yeah, it's different. Everything feels more translucent, more layered, almost like frosted glass. You can even set your app icons to be completely clear, which looks super clean and minimalist. I will be honest though, with certain wallpapers, the contrast can be a bit low, making the clear icons a little tough to see at a glance. But overall, it definitely makes the whole OS feel more modern and a lot less like a stretched out iPhone, which is a big plus in my book. Okay, but the real story, the absolute headliner of iPadOS 26 is the new windowing system, Stage Manager. Yeah, for me, I think that's a thing of the past. This is the real deal. Slide over is completely gone and split view is still around, but it looks a bit different. But what we get in return is, well, it's basically macOS windowing. You get the little traffic light controls, red, yellow, green, just like on a Mac. You can freely resize windows from any corner, not just in those fixed configurations we had before. And you can have up to 12 windows open at once. It's more than enough for heavy multitasking and productivity. It finally feels like the software is catching up to the incredible hardware inside this thing. And it's the little things, the quality of life improvements that really bring it all together. You can swipe up from the bottom and hold to get expose, which spreads out all your open windows. So you can just tap the one you need. It's so much faster and more intuitive than the old app switcher. Then there's the new menu bar. You just swipe down from the top of an app and boom, you get your file, edit, view menus, all the commands you'd expect right there. No more hunting through obscure settings menus and this the new cursor. It might seem like a small change, but it is a huge deal for the experience. It's no longer that morphing adaptive circle. It's a proper precise arrow, much closer to a traditional desktop cursor. It gives you so much more confidence when you're clicking on small targets, dragging window edges, or making fine adjustments in an editing app. It just feels right. So for my workflow, this is what it looks like in practice. I'm literally writing this very script in notes. I've got my research articles open here in Safari and I can have a folder with my video assets open right next to them. I'm not jumping between full screen apps anymore. It's a fluid, cohesive workspace. And you see, it's not just one of these features in isolation. It's how they all work together. The windowing system would feel clumsy without the precision of the new cursor. The complexity of managing all these windows is made simple by expose. The power hidden within these apps is unlocked by the easily accessible menu bar. It's not just a collection of new features. It's a complete systematic redesign of how you interact with the iPad. It shifts the entire paradigm from a sequential one app at a time device to a parallel multi-window computer. This is the fundamental change that has always been missing. For years, the biggest joke, the biggest weakness of the iPad for any kind of serious work was the Files app. It was weird and wonky as the folks at 9to5Mac perfectly described it. It just never felt right. With iPadOS 26, Apple has completely revamped it. And I'm not exaggerating when I say it's a night and day difference. Okay, check this out. This for me is the single biggest game changer. You can now pin folders or even specific files right to your dock. I have my main folder pinned here, which means I have instant access to all my critical project files from any screen in any app. It's incredible. 
The list view is now just like the finder on a Mac. You can resize columns to see more or less information. You can see nested folders with a little drop down arrow without having to navigate away from your current view and you get way more get info data. You can even customize your folders with colors and emojis to keep things visually organized. And this is the linchpin that makes the whole new system truly pro. The revamped files app is the glue that holds the new multitasking together. Without it, having multiple windows is just a neat visual trick. But with it, you can finally execute a professional asset heavy workflow. From my work as a content creator, I can just drag a 4K video clip from my project folder that's pinned in the dock right into my LumaFusion timeline, which is open in another window. No more open in or share sheet gymnastics. This one change is what makes a professional creator workflow not just possible, but genuinely efficient on an iPad. All right, let's get real for a second. This is a developer beta, beta one, and it absolutely feels like it. So before you rush to install this on your main mission critical device, please don't. Just wait for the public beta or the final release. The battery life is, well, it's not great. As you totally expect, on Reddit, people are reporting significant battery drain, and my experience is exactly the same. The system is doing a lot of re-indexing in the background, and things just aren't optimized yet. I saw one user report going through 40% in under 4 hours doing tasks that used to take half that, and that sounds about right to me. This will almost certainly get better with future updates, but right now you'll want to be near a charger. It's also buggy. I've had a few random stutters, some visual glitches with the liquid glass UI where animations get a bit choppy or things overlap weirdly and apps can sometimes just crash. Again, this is all totally normal for a first developer beta. And yeah, it can get warm, especially when I'm exporting a video or doing some heavy edits with masks in Lightroom. The back of the iPad definitely heats up. That's the M1 chip working hard with software that hasn't been fully optimized yet. So how does all this translate to my actual work? Let's start with video editing in LumaFusion. The app itself, as always, is fantastic. The M1 chip just chews through 4K footage without breaking a sweat. But the big new feature for my workflow is background tasks. I can now start a long video export and then just switch to another app to start writing my next YouTube script. The export just keeps chugging along in the background this is a huge time saver and makes the iPad feel so much more like a proper computer. It's a similar story in Lightroom. The performance for editing raw files is still excellent, but now I can have Lightroom open right next to the files app, easily dragging and dropping photos or have it next to Safari to look up some editing inspiration. It just makes the whole process more seamless. I will say Lightroom itself can still be a bit of a resource hog and cause the iPad to heat up, but honestly, that's been an issue for a while, even on previous versions of iPadOS, and this, this is a big one for anyone with a desk setup. True external monitor support for M-powered iPads. It's not just mirroring anymore. I can extend my desktop, drag windows over to my big monitor and have a massive canvas to work on. It's a genuine productivity boost but it's not perfect. It's still a beta and there are limitations. There's no clamshell mode yet so you can't close the iPad and just use the monitor. The iPad screen has to stay on and it seems to be limited to 4K at 60 Hertz for now. So no high refresh rate support on external displays just yet. So it's a huge step in the right direction, but there's still room for Apple to grow here. What's really amazing about all this is that these features background exporting true external display support, they finally let the M1 chip stretch its legs. The power was always here in this device. It was just locked away behind artificial software limitations iPadOS 26 feels like the key that finally unlocks that potential. So after two weeks is the M1 iPad Pro with iPadOS 26, a MacBook killer. For me, for my specific workflow, as a content creator who lives in LumaFusion and Lightroom and who really values mobility and flexibility, the answer is a resounding and honestly surprising yes. The combination of a truly functional windowing system and a files app that actually works has removed the biggest roadblocks that always, always sent me running back to my Mac. This setup is perfect for other creators, for writers, for artists, for students, really anyone whose workflow can be accomplished with the amazing apps on the App Store and who values the incredible flexibility of having a great tablet and a powerful computer in one single device. But let's be clear, 
If you're a programmer who needs the full X code, if you rely on very specific niche desktop only software, or if you need to manage complex server connections and system level tools, you still need a Mac. The iPad isn't there yet and that's okay. And I have to say it one last time, this is a beta. It's exciting. It shows the incredible future of the iPad, but please wait for the public beta in July or the final release this fall before you put it on a device you depend on every day. But that's just my experience. I would love to know what you all think. Are you excited about iPad OS 26? Do you think it's finally the update we've all been waiting for? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If this video helped you out, a like is always, always appreciated. And be sure to subscribe for more deep dives into the Apple ecosystem. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.